Welcome to MIG Monday. I'm Paul. Today we're going to talk about proper placement of a weld in a fillet joint. Uh, how do we achieve that? What do we have to do as far as torch angles and stuff? Uh, so I want to show you that today. I also want to give you a couple of tips on tacking up a fillet weld because there are a couple tricks to it. It seems like it's pretty easy at first. You just put a couple pieces of metal together and put a little tack weld on, the, on an end and to hold it in place. But what I actually want to tell you about is, let me try and hold this like that and get it up so you can see it. When you put a molten metal down, what does metal do when it's hot? It expands, all right? So when you're putting molten metal down, if you put too big of a tack weld down, once that molten metal starts to cool down and starts to contract, it's gonna pull the fillet out of shape. So if it's important to be in a particular shape, you either have to use small, fill, uh, small tack welds so that it doesn't distort it, or ideally clamp it in place so that it doesn't work you know, against, so the laws of physics don't work against you. The other thing that can happen when you're tacking, a, well, if you only tack it on one side, and also, again, a fairly large tack, uh, once that metal contracts, it also can tend to lift the piece off at the, at the opposite end, thereby giving you a gap to deal with as you're coming down the joint. So ideally, you'd want to put a little tack on each end. In fact, maybe one on each side, one on one side, one on the other side, so the forces counteract each other. All right, so I'm going to tack up a couple of these. And then we're going to do a, uh, we'll do some welding and see what the placement is for a good weld. All right? Okay, here we go. And a little tack up at the front. All right, so now we got it tacked up, nice and straight. And what we're going to try to do now is we'll talk about placement of the gun and the wire on the fillet. Imagine this to be the wire, and we have our joint here. What we want to do on a, on a joint like this, especially if the two plates are the same size, we're going to want to just split the joint 45 degrees. Just aim the wire into there, back about 20 degrees or so, and then just move forward, keeping the wire right in the seam of the joint. Okay? Some things change a little bit. Sometimes you might not want to have a to weld the same size, especially if you have two different size or different thickness materials. You know, if you have one that's thin and one that's thick, you're going to want the bulk of the weld on the thick side, so, you know, because you're going to have it, it's going to be a little hot and you don't want to burn through the thin materials. So then you might concentrate the angle more on the, th on the side that's the thicker plate. So just bear that in mind and what we'll do is we'll run a couple of beads and we'll try and show you what, what a good weld looks like, all right? All right, here we go. Split the joint back about 90 degrees. All right. Now hopefully what you can see here is that we got a, about the same amount of material on the bottom plate as we do on the top plate, which for this particular weld, is, that's exactly the way it should be, all right? All right, so now I'm gonna change my gun angle up a little bit and we'll see what we do with uh, changing the direction of the angle as far as with the way the weld looks, all right? Here we go. Here we go, now we'll do this the other side. <clears throat> All right, so now hopefully you get an idea of how important torch angle is. On this second weld, you can see I almost have a total lack of fusion on the, on the upper wall because I changed, and not really dramatically either, it wasn't a big, big change, but I changed my torch angle, directed most of it on the bottom plate, and it didn't tie in on the top plate. 
There in the second weld here, I corrected the torch angle, got it back to the proper placement, and you can see that it's tied in and washed in nicely on both plate surfaces. So torch angle is pretty important. You get welds where you have a lack of fusion on one side, maybe your torch angle needs to be just slightly adjusted to compensate for that. All right, well, I hope that clears up a few things for you. And uh, enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed the show, and see you next time. Well, if you learned something today or like what you saw, please feel free to subscribe and keep an eye out for new episodes every MIG Monday.